Hi, I'm Sarah Marbury, Executive Vice President of the Center for Health Design. Today I'm talking with Dr. Bill Thomas, who's an international authority on geriatric medicine and elder care. Dr. Thomas is the opening keynote speaker at the upcoming Environments for Aging Conference, which is April 29th through May 2nd in Orlando, Florida. Dr. Thomas is the founder of Changing Aging and also the Eden Alternative which is a philosophy and program that has deinstitutionalized nursing homes over the past 20 years. He's a self-described nursing home abolitionist, and he's also the creator of The Greenhouse, a radically new approach to long-term care where nursing homes are replaced with small home-like environments so that people can live full and interactive lives. Welcome, Dr. Thomas. Well, thanks for inviting me, Sarah. Well, I feel like I should call you Bill because we've known each other for so long. And Quite a I'm, long time in a good way. Yes. Well, I am very excited that you are going to be giving the keynote at our Environments for Aging conference. And I understand that you're, you'll be talking to us about how the dwellings we typically create for older people are defined by our, by our culture and our beliefs. And as an alternative, you propose taking a developmental approach to aging. So what does this mean exactly, and how does it affect the design of the built environment? Well, if you look at American society in particular, the the conception of aging uh, in our culture is predominantly declinist. In other words, by and large, we equate aging with decline. And therefore, uh, we often design environments with decline as a primary uh, motivating feature. And if you want to see this in its most extreme form, you can look at CCRC campuses where the whole concept of decline is built right in to the independent living, assisted living, you know, nursing home. And what we're arguing for, and I think has a, there's merit to support, is a developmental approach to aging where you begin to design environments with growth in mind, the growth of older people in mind. And what are the major barriers to to this type of of, of change? It seems like it's almost a, a culture change. Yeah, boy, you, I mean, you put your finger right on it. I mean, the the, the main difficulty uh, is that it this idea runs headlong into deeply embedded ideas about what aging is really all about, and I. You know, I'm going to put it right out there. One of the most terrible misconceptions about aging is that uh, our, our the primary thing we need to do is be compassionate to old people because, I mean, after all, they're all old. And uh, I, I take a different approach, which is we need to create environments that are matched to the developmental potential of older people the same way we create environments that are matched to the developmental potential of young people. Uh, What's different is the stage of life and the needs and requirements, but what should be the same is a commitment to facilitating growth. So what what, what would an environment like that look like? Well, um, uh, here I'll give you a a very top concept that's really important. In uh, our work, we, we hold fast to the idea that aging is a team sport and that we are dedicated to uh, creating environments where people can have access to community, where, where they can develop meaningful interrelationships with others, because that's what's really crucial to uh, quality of life in uh, elderhood. So you've been working in this field for for a long time, and have you seen a lot of change over the years? Uh, I would say yes and no. On the no side, I still see people designing and building environments for older people that look like they uh, can't come straight out of the 1960s and 70s. I mean... There are there are people who are actively designing and building in our field who really haven't updated their concepts in half a century. And I'm sorry to say that, but if you want to come with me, I can show you <laughs> what they look like. On the other hand, uh, we are seeing a lot of new enthusiasm and excitement and a new openness to, to different models of care. 
and different models for design and person environment fit, and I think a new vocabulary. So I do see change in the field, and the symposium, of course, is an important part of leading that change, but there's an awful lot of drag in uh, the field of design for older people, and uh, you have to acknowledge that. And, and so um, what is going to drive the, that change? Is it, is it the baby boom generation that, that has different expectations? I mean, you know, in some of the verbiage about your, your, your keynote address at the conference, um, you know, the, the words, you know, radical are, are, are used, and we're, we're on the cusp of radical changes. So why are we at that point right now? Well, you, you, you raise when you're talking about uh, the post-war uh, baby boom generation, you're, you're raising a very important and thorny subject, and um, sort of the least insightful take on the baby boomers is the baby boomers are going to demand change, and we're going to have to accommodate them. Okay, that's that, uh, that's sort of true, but not helpful. Uh, in fact, the generation, uh, the post-war baby boom generation, is going to have a wide range of desires and wants and demands. And if anything, part of the complication of that generation is that the breadth of their desires is going to be much wider than for the greatest generation. It was relatively easier to design single a single type approach for the greatest generation because the generation had greater homogeneity inside the generation. The, the post-war baby boom generation has much more diversity of experience in the generation and therefore is going to have a very a wider array of demands. And I'll just say one thing really quickly about this. Um, if you look at the history of ice cream, you can sort of see what's coming. When the boomers were children, there were only three flavors of ice cream, uh, chocolate, vanilla, strawberry. It, by the time the boomers were adults, there were a thousand flavors of ice cream. And uh, I think we're going to see something similar in designing for aging environments. It's not going to be one new model or two new models that come out. It's, it's going to have to be a thousand flavors. Well, that's very interesting. I love that analogy. And I'm looking forward to hearing your, your keynote address at the Environments for Aging conference in a few weeks. So thank you for talking with me today, um, Dr. Thomas, and um, we will see you soon. I'll see you there, Sarah. Okay.